Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Analysis of a Peculiar Flyback Converter. In a recent conversation in a LinkedIn group, this is the link to the group and this is the conversation. I'm putting links to these two in the page of this YouTube video, so you can click on it. Well, in this conversation, there was a description of a sort of a different uh, looking flyback converter. The main difference, of course, is the fact that the secondary is not connected to ground or to another ground, but rather to the input voltage. And if we look at what is happening here, then of course, when the transistor is on, we're going to have the current going up. If it's a DCM, it'll be starting from zero. If it's a CCM, then of course it'll be with some initial condition, then it will go up. And then during the T off uh, in the DCM, we're going to see the current going down to zero. And in the case of CCM, of course, uh, it'll uh, go down to a certain level and then it'll go up again. So this is the regular operation. Again, the difference is that the secondary is connected to the uh, primary voltage. So inspired by this uh, different looking flyback converter, I've uh, sort of uh, posted a riddle, and this is the link to the particular page in the uh, LinkedIn group. And the riddle was like that. Suppose you have a circuit like this. Well, this circuit is in fact the situation during the off state. And during the off state, the primary is disconnected. We have a nine volt. We have a charged inductor going through the diode exactly as we have it here, okay? So the question was, looking at this circuit, with an inductor having an initial condition of I sub zero, what is the shortest, shortest intuitive answer to the energy delivered to the output from V in to the energy delivered to the output from the inductor? Now, this is an important question because uh, it sort of uh, discusses or maybe clarifies a misconception that sometimes we do have. This circuit is very similar to a snubber. In a snubber, we have exactly this same situation. This would be the leakage inductance uh, charged with some energy. Then we have the reflected voltage. And so therefore, uh, this is the situation that we have as the leakage inductance is uh, moving or the charge or the energy of the leakage inductance is transferred to the uh, snubber capacitor. Now, the misconception is that the energy transferred to the capacitor is Li square over two, that is the energy of the inductor, but this is incorrect because as we see here, the current is passing through this voltage source as well as through the inductor. So therefore, since the direction of the current is this way, then energy is coming off here. So in this case, both the energy of the inductor and the energy coming from V in will eventually end up here. Of course, I'm assuming that this process is going uh, on until uh, the current drops to zero. So the question was, what is this ratio? Without going into too much details of the shape of the current, triangular shape, and the time it takes, etc., etc. So here is the answer. The ratio between the energy is the voltage of V in and the voltage drop on the inductor. Voltage drop of the inductor is V out during V in. Why is that? Because during the discharge process, charge is being moved from this branch to the output. So we have a, and this is of course the same charge because it's passing through this branch. So 
the energy is charge time voltage. So the energy coming off here is Q times V in. Now during this process, the voltage across the inductor is constant. It is the difference between V out and V in. I'm neglecting the voltage across the diode. So therefore it's also Q times VL is the energy coming off the inductor. And therefore this ratio is this thing. Or if you want it a little bit more uh, arranged here, voltage of the inductor is V out minus V in. Energy, indeed it is Li square over two, but in this particular situation, since the voltage of the inductor is clamped and there is a charge passing through it, there is no escape from the conclusion that the energy is Q times Vn, Vn during the time of the discharge. So therefore we come up with this equation. So what are the characteristics of this sort of peculiar flyback converter? On the pro side we can say that some energy is coming from the input and not processed by the switch. That is, energy is coming this way and not through here and then being passed. And of course, this will reduce losses. However, it depends on, again, the ratio between V in and the difference here. So if V out is large, this amount of energy is small. In fact, as this question was posed or as the circuit was presented, it was said that the input is 9 volt and this is 150 volt. So the difference is uh, large and therefore most of the energy is actually be coming out of the inductor rather than uh, from the input. So this is the only thing I can say in a positive way for this circuit. On the other hand, we have many problems. First of all, there is no isolation. Secondly, <clears throat> the output voltage is always in, uh, connected to the input. So even if there is no switching here, the voltage will be 9 volt in this particular case if, without switching because you have a direct connection here, which in many cases may not be so good. And of course, as shown, uh, we are lacking here snubbers to uh, sort of clamp the voltages that will arise from the leakage inductances, which are not shown here. But this is not specially related to this particular uh, structure, but this is the flyback in general. So this brings me to the end of this short presentation. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps uh, it will give you an insight to other circuits too. Thank you very much.